Hey everybody, I'm up on my roof right now and I'm standing beside my solar thermal collector. So today I want to talk a little bit about why I think solar thermal collectors are not dead, as well as some of the most important things to get right if you're going to install a solar thermal collector, why you might want to do it, and a little problem that I'm having that I never anticipated. Hey, my name is Rob Avis. I run Verge Permaculture and Adaptive Habitat, and I'm a mechanical engineer, and I do permaculture. So I guess I'm a permaculture engineer. Anyways, uh, I've had this solar thermal collector for at least five years now, and it has run seamlessly, which is more than I can say about most solar thermal collectors. I think a lot of people um, don't like solar thermal collectors because they, they are known to fail. Um, but I have a friend in town here who runs a company called Simple Solar, and I swear to God, he has the most incredible solar thermal collector system out there. So I'll talk a little bit about how his system works and, um, and then we'll, we'll get into why you might want to have one here. So right behind me there, you can see the solar thermal collector actually has a photovoltaic panel on it. So that runs the pump downstairs, which means that this system is actually off grid. So I don't need the grid to be functioning from an um, electrical perspective in order for this system to function. And, and the reason that's really important is that one of the failure points of these systems occurs when the grid electricity goes down and all of a sudden the system stagnates, which means the, the fluid stops flowing and it gets really hot. And then all of a sudden it pukes glycol everywhere and glycol is really expensive and so then you've lost any kind of economic advantage to um, to running the system and so the pump itself is actually DC which means that it speeds up and slows down based on the amount of Sun which means that it's also speeding up and slowing down based on the amount of heat that the, the, the tubes are collecting so really brilliant little design the other thing that the system has is this three-way valve which is hard to see because it's covered in foil right now but this three-way valve is one of the most intelligent things in this entire system in that it um, blends the fluid in a way that ensures that the, the liquid going back down to the solar hot water tank never goes above 80 degrees Celsius. Now you can set this to whatever you want, but um, the other kind of major failure point that occurs with these systems is that they just spiral out of control. And so once your solar hot water tank is full, you need to send the heat somewhere else. Now a lot of systems to manage that thermal overload will put in an electronic three-way valve. But again, that electronic three-way valve is going to need grid electricity. So in the event that the grid goes down, you no longer have your heat dissipation loop. So this thing runs entirely on its own without any electricity. It runs entirely on temperature. And when the heat or water is too hot, you can see we've got a dissipation rig there in the back. Now that dissipation rig can go on the back of the panel or you can put it in a number of other locations um, like in your house or into an in-floor heating system. doesn't really matter where you're dissipating, you just want to think a little bit about um, whether or not the dissipation is happening in the floor in the summertime. You may not want to heat your house up and so having a, a summertime dissipation loop is really important. Now you'll notice that there's a little owl there. The kids and I put this up the other day. His name's Hoots. And uh, not a real owl, of course, but one of the things that I've noticed with this aluminum foil is that the magpies are going nuts over it. So they're actually eating all the silver foil off and chewing out the foam which is what keeps the heat in the pipes so I haven't quite figured out what to do there I tried the owl it didn't work so I might have to put some of those pigeon pegs up or try a different type of, of tape it's really frustrating because I've had to replace this a number of times so why might you want a solar thermal rig like I said I don't think that they're dead at all I think that solar thermal um, plays a really vital role in the resilient home acreage and farm which is really what we uh, consult on that's what we design for people 
And the thing is, is that most photovoltaic arrays right now, so these are the solar arrays that are producing electricity, shut down as soon as the grid shuts down. So that's a first type one error. I mean, if you're, if you're going at this to build a resilient acreage or farm, you really want your home to continue to have electricity if the grid doesn't have electricity. Um, as soon as the grid doesn't have electricity, uh, a lot of the other systems in the home tend to fail. So a lot of new hot water tanks need natural gas and electricity, specifically the direct power vent. So I think that having both a backup domestic hot water and also potentially partial space heating solution is a really great idea. Because to replace the hot water load with photovoltaic panels, which is what a lot of people are talking about nowadays because photovoltaics are so cheap, doesn't really get to the root of the problem. It can if you're going to create a grid hybrid system, in other words, a photovoltaic system that will run when the grid is not operational. But if you're gonna try and heat your hot water using photovoltaics all the time, you may end up wanting to have a bigger battery bank. And so the system can spiral out of control from a cost perspective. Whereas if you just put a couple of photo, um, if you just put a couple of these thermal panels up on the roof in conjunction with your hybrid photovoltaic system, um, now your photovoltaic system can be a little bit smaller, your battery bank can be a little bit smaller, your inverters can be a little bit smaller, and you can have an independent system that runs entirely on its own whenever it's ready to run and it's super robust um, and they're, they're actually not that expensive. I mean, yeah, there's some plumbing involved and there's a couple of panels and, and, and things like that that you need to get, but a lot of the clients that we see um, are more interested in resilience than the final dollar because when they look at resilient homes, acreages and, acreages and farms, they're coming at it from an insurance perspective. And so um, insurance has different criteria that people use in order to judge whether or not they should purchase something. So hopefully you found that interesting. If you're interested in learning more about uh, resilient homes, acreages, and farms. We offer courses, specifically the permaculture design course. We also have consulting that we offer at adaptivehabitat.ca. So check out both of our websites, vergepermaculture.ca and adaptivehabitat.ca for more information. Thanks so much. Have a great day.